I made an Instagram post yesterday talking about how uh, joint specific training is a really good tool to use for targeting aspects of our tissue at the joint level that we don't normally use. And the reason that's important is that your brain is really good at getting rid of stuff that doesn't get used. And I, I use the example of somebody bench pressing and getting strong at bench and then stopping bench press for a long period of time and losing their ability to bench press at that level that they had trained to. And that's just a, an example of how our body works. It's really efficient at getting rid of stuff that doesn't get used. And so if we're talking about a shoulder joint, in the functional range conditioning world, we have all these different tools that we can use for different kinds of training. Like we use something called a car to maintain range of motion. So a shoulder car is basically just taking your shoulder joint through its full range of motion, isolating that motion from any other joint's motion. And so I'm using all the linear movement, I'm trying to rotate my shoulder while I do that. I'm just touching all of those little corners of movement that I don't normally touch. So we think about where a shoulder can go in space. If I'm going to the gym and I'm training and I'm doing different pushing and pulling exercises, I'm probably doing some pushing and pulling in this horizontal plane, I'm probably doing some vertical stuff, maybe here, Maybe I'm doing some Olympic weightlifting and I'm putting my shoulder out in this position. That's good. That's using that stuff in certain positions. I'm telling my brain that that shit that moves there is a priority. Our body's going to maintain it. We're going to train it. We're going to get more efficient at using it. The longer I do that and I don't touch those other ranges of motion, which there's a large percentage of stuff that I'm not touching if that's the majority of my training, I'm deprioritizing that stuff. I'm telling my brain that over a long enough period, it's okay to strip some of that stuff away. And our brain is really, really good at doing that. It's ultra efficient when it comes to maintaining tissue that's being used and getting rid of shit that isn't being used. So we bring in joint specific training now. Now I'm adding in training time that isn't specific to an exercise. I'm not trying to get more efficient or stronger at a particular exercise. Now what I'm looking at is looking at the motion of my shoulder joint, and I'm trying to find areas that need to be trained, whether that's because maybe I have limited range of motion. I might have external rotation that stops here, and I wanna snatch, and I wanna do pressing overhead. Well, getting more external rotation, free of needing another joint to do that, say, I could get my position, my, my forearm vertical, if I just arch the shit out of my back, or if I really retract my shoulder blade and pull it down, I can do those things, but I'm not getting that motion from the shoulder. I want that motion from the shoulder because I want to do stuff there. I like doing things in a handstand. I like you know, doing pull-ups. So it benefits me to have my rotator cuff be able to tolerate load and do stuff and work in that position. Maybe I need some passive stretching to get my shoulder there and then loading it with isometrics. In the FRC world, we would just do passive stretching and then do something called pails and rails, which is end range isometrics for shortened and lengthened tissue in the rotator cuff, if that's the, the part we're trying to train. Maybe I have all the range of motion that I need and I just wanna build up more capacity in that shoulder joint. So I start loading my rotation eccentrically or whatever. There's so many options for training. Pretty much all of the shit that you would do with a traditional exercise, we can apply all that stuff at the joint level. It's just the mindset that's really different. The focus is on developing capacity Really, if we're, if we're looking at that shoulder joint and seeing what it can do, we're trying to funnel that training into the things that it sucks at doing. Maybe that's my internal rotation. Maybe I can't get my shoulder here without really lifting my shoulder blade up. Maybe I don't have that much range of motion. Maybe I do jujitsu, which I do. My shoulder is gonna get cranked into this position, and every time I do that, I get this pinch in the front of my shoulder. That's a misbehaving shoulder. It shouldn't pinch to do that. Now, I could avoid that position entirely, but if you're doing jujitsu, you're probably gonna get put there violently with lots of force, so it's in your benefit to really make that position robust. Maybe it's not here, maybe it's here. I mean, it, it comes down to looking at the particular joint and seeing what it's good at and what it can't do. Based on that, we can add in training to build those qualities that are lacking. And so let's say I've had the shoulder joint that's limited in ranges of motion. I start adding in training time on top of my regular training, I'm still working out, I'm lifting weights, I'm doing stuff that feels good, but I'm also working on developing those lacking capacities in my shoulder. Now, over some time, now I have the shoulder that just does way more stuff. All that means is that in those positions where it was shitty and painful or uncomfortable or felt weak, it's not like that anymore. It feels good to do that. 
In addition to that, now when I'm doing strength exercises and I'm pressing overhead, I have this rotator cuff and a brain that understands this rotator cuff better. That means I can recruit more tissue. My brain has a better idea of the task that I'm trying to accomplish. And now I just can do more shit with my shoulder or whatever joint that is. Now, I didn't mention injuries, but like my right shoulder here, I have no AC joint. I had a motorcycle accident where I had a fully torn AC ligament and a partially torn CC ligament and I didn't have surgery. I just did a bunch of training on it. That training wasn't just trying to get back to bench pressing again or doing a lot of those exercises that felt super limited. I actually looked at where, where do I have problems in my shoulder? Where do I have limited range of motion, limited abilities to load it? Where do I not have control? And there were a lot of those positions after that injury healed that I had to work on and develop. And it wasn't geared towards getting better at an exercise. It was just looking at what does this joint suck at if I'm looking at this joint at an isolated level? I trained those qualities. And I still have this mechanical limitation, obviously, like there's a ligament that's missing. That's a structural problem. It doesn't affect my training though. This is still the side that I can, I'm close to bent pressing my body weight on. This shoulder works and does everything that I need it to, even though it's fucked up and I can make my collarbone stick out here. So this is just coming back down into this, this shift in our mindset of what is a priority in training. You may want to have a big bench press. That's a priority training. You need a healthy, functional shoulder joint to do that bench press. So you should be training for both of those things, not just bench pressing, hoping that your shoulder gets better because it doesn't work both ways. Doing bench doesn't make a shoulder joint be more like a shoulder joint, it just makes you more efficient at bench pressing. The longer you do that, the more you're prioritizing specific aspects of that shoulder and deprioritizing other shit. So it just comes down to having a little broader focus when it comes to your training and you can apply that stuff at any joint and you should be applying it at any joint if something is lacking there, or even if it's not lacking, just with the efforts of maintaining those things that you already have because your brain is so good at eliminating over time shit that you're not using. And there's a lot of stuff that isn't getting touched often. So I hope that uh, helps at least elaborate on what I was talking about yesterday. If you have questions on any of this stuff, of course, leave me a comment, let me know. Thanks.